Okay guys, so in this video we're going to look at git bisect, so let's get into it. So in this video we're going to cover basically why I believe that small commits can be very useful and how to use git bisect to find bugs when you don't have an easy way of figuring that out. So basically when we're working we might find ourselves in a situation where there's a bug and you can't really quickly figure out why that bug is there. It's been there maybe forever. It's maybe it's been there fairly recently. You're working and it's just not that easy to track it down. So what you want to figure out now is where, when was this bug actually introduced into the code base? Now you can sit and manually debug the whole code base if you want to, but Git bisect can help you figure out the code that actually caused the issue much quicker than if you were to just go through the whole code base. So what it basically does is that it start, it's a git command like this where you simply start up a specific mode where git is going to ask you to give it a bad commit and a good commit so it can create a timeline or two points where there's a range of commits in between these two commits where something could have gone wrong or something something stopped working right and then it just does a basic binary search on top of those commits so the way that this works is pretty much this so you have a sequence of commits here and you say that okay the latest commit is a bad commit where I found the bug and then it's, uh, it's gonna ask you okay can you give me a good commit and then you can go backwards in time until you find a commit that is actually good where the code is working and then git is going to pick the middle point of all of these commits and say okay is this a bad commit or is it a good commit and if you say it's a good commit it's going to move the pointer and say oh okay that's a good one then we know that all of this stuff is working so the problem must be here somewhere. Okay, so let's move the pointer to the middle again and say, is this a good commit or is it a bad commit? If it's good again, then we move the pointer until we either find the commit, the first commit that is bad, or we go all the way up to the commit that we actually declared as the absolute first commit that was the bad one, the latest one. And the same goes for the other, other way. If we say, okay, this is a bad commit, all right, then let's go downwards towards the last good one we've had. And if that's also a bad one, we're well, okay, then, then let's continue until we find the first bad commit. And so on and so on. And that's basically all, all it does. So it helps you very quickly narrow down a specific commit that caused the, the, the bug, and that's it. So if we have a, no, actually, let's look at my little test here first. So I have this all these nice little unit tests and I have this add function that adds two numbers together and basically all it does is add two numbers together and we have a bunch of tests to check that which is awesome. So if I now go and I run npm test it's going to tell me that oh nope this is broken we are getting unexpected outputs from this function here okay let's just pretend that this is a really big system and we don't really know when this broke it we may have broken it and somebody else might have broken it let's just see if we can find the commit that caused this issue so let's do git bisect start and now you notice the b here in my little terminal that states that okay we're in bisect mode so let's start by saying git bisect bad because we need to give it the first bad commit which is the latest one and now we need to find the good one so do git check out head which is the pointer of our git tree and let's give it the tilde and say all right let's go now let's go 16 commits back in time and let's see if we can find the first bad one so now we're in detached mode here and we have checked out a commit that is 16 steps back in time let's do npm test And that's a good one. Awesome. So let's try that. So let's say git bisect good. Cool. So now it says it has roughly three steps to, for me to continue on. And now notice that it actually check. It's basically changed the SHA of my commit. And that is because it moved me. So this was the first, like I was on the tip of my history then I moved 16 commits back and tried running the command and now it moves me to the middle point between the tip of my history and the uh, the last good commit I had so now I can run npm test and now oh it's broken okay let's say git bisect bad okay so now it says it has two steps because now it's moving moving me to the middle point again okay Let's say npm test. 
and that's a good commit. Okay, cool. Yeah, then let's say git bisect good. So then there's one more step, npm test. And that's a bad one. Okay, git bisect bad. So one more step, okay, npm test. Okay, cool, git bisect good. Cool, so now the output is that, oh, it says that, okay, this commit here is the first bad commit. All right, cool. Now I have the first commit that actually caused the issue. Let's take a look at git checkout, that commit there, but I don't want that commit. I want one commit before it. So let's say one commit before, and then let's do a git diff with that commit. Cool, so here's the problem right there. Uh, the add function has someone added a plus one to my equation here, and that's pretty much the problem. All right, cool, let's do git check out master. And then do git by say, well, I don't have to do it in that order, but I'm just doing it that way. Reset, because I don't need to do the bisect anymore. There we are, and let's go to my code, let's go to my main.js file here, and we'll see that, oh, yep, this is true. Someone added that line, that those characters there. Let's run npm test, nice. Let's see, oh yeah, and now it works. So we figured out the bugs and because we had such a small commit where we just added like a really, really tiny thing, it was very easy for us to figure that out. Now, it might get a little bit tedious for you to have really, really small commits, but it really is a useful thing to keep them as small as possible. I'm not saying that you need to like commit every character that you make or something like that, but as you saw in that diff, it wasn't all that, it was like one line of logic that was changed or something very small that actually changed. And that can be a little bit tedious to work with. So what I like to do is that I like to create a little alias that I call work in progress. So I say GWP, and this is basically us saying git commit dot all, basically. And then it says, uh, right after that, it just commits a new, uh, sets a new commit with the message work in progress. Now, I am in no way promoting that you do this sort of work, where there you commit all of these really ambiguous work in progress, one work in progress, fix, fix, fix. Because if you do that to the master branch, some of your coworkers, they're, like, they're gonna have a heart attack. So what I like to do is when I work on a feature branch or something like that, you should, I'm working on master in this demo here, but you should be working on a, on a feature branch, is that when I'm done with the feature and it's all working and I know there are no bugs, everything just kind of works, then I create an atomic commit. I use rebase to rewrite my, my feature branch history before I merge into master. So I can get the first real commit that actually has a descriptive message and all of these in-between ones, these are just temporary commits. And I can say git rebase interactive and that commit. So I get everything that's changed between the tip of my master, my, my, my commit history and that first actual useful commit message. And these, as you can see, these are just these kind of really sloppy commit messages. But it's okay, because I have this little command here where I will, I will just do a squash. So what I do is that I'm gonna change all my pick lines to just F, which stands for fix up. And fix up basically just says, okay, it's like squash, but discards the commit the commits logs message. In other words, each of these work in progress are just mashed into the first non-fix-up uh, uh, lines uh, commit message. And it will make sense in just a second. So I run that, and now it rewrites all that stuff. And now I'm going to change the first message here, or like the oldest, oldest commit message here, because I don't want it to say fixed. I want to change it to reword, which allows me to change the commit message. So let's do that. And then I will say, hmm, that's something like fixed add function bug, something like that. And if I now do a git log, ta-da, all of those intermediary work in progress, fix, 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 all of those stuff, all of that is now combined into this one very nice atomic commit. 
and this keeps my tree very nice and clean. So while I'm working on this, I can create really small commits with my very convenient alias, and then before I can merge it into master, I just have uh, have them all squashed into one commit method. So while I'm working, I can use bisect and very quickly figure out where I caused a regression bug or where some problem occurred, and I can of course also use bisect on master, and it becomes very easy for me because of if each commit is just one atomic commit that represents one story or one feature or something like that, it becomes very easy to figure out which story introduced the regression. So hopefully this has made you think a little bit about the size of your commits and hopefully git bisect is now a useful tool that you can use when you want to figure out if some commit has caused a regression. Have a great day!